Hello again. Welcome back to meiosis. This is our last video to think about uh, the sources of variation in sexually reproducing organisms. So let's move to our PowerPoint slides. And I think we're here. Okay. So it's taking a second for everything to click in here. Okay. So uh, it turns out that Organisms that reproduce sexually weren't the first to evolve. The organisms that were the first to evolve way back in our Earth's history um, were organisms that reproduce by cloning, by mitosis or some version of mitosis um, where the genetic material was simply replicated and, and you know, cells divided. And still, some organisms reproduce that way. And in fact, our, a lot of plants can reproduce asexually. Uh, even if they can reproduce sexually. But here's the deal. Sexual reproduction is really, really common in the world today, and it seems to have been a very successful strategy. And the question is, why did sex evolve? Uh, there are researchers who study this. It would be kind of fun to be one of those researchers every time someone asks you what you do. Yeah, yeah I study sex. I study why sex. Uh, and, but they're really focusing on why did this mechanism come to be the way it is today? What, benef what were the benefits of it? Could we see, can we see why it was selected for, perhaps? And the, the big idea here is perhaps sex or sexual reproduction evolved because it leads to variable offspring, offspring that vary. And um, in their, in their characteristics. And when you have variable offspring, you're maybe better equipped or your offspring are better equipped to survive in a changing world because the world does change. Things like climate change and um, predators or uh, uh, parasites or viruses develop that weren't there before, right? And so organisms that reproduce sexually produce a variety of of a, a genetically different offspring that might be able to survive a particular new virus or a new predator threat or a change in climate. If you produce offspring that are all identical, it might be easier to do that. And it certainly doesn't require a partner because you can just reproduce on your own. So it's probably easier and faster, but all of your offspring are gonna be genetically identical. And that could be a problem. If none of them can survive, you know, if, if one of them has trouble with a new virus, they all do. They all get wiped out. And so we think that sex evolved, in, in part at least, because it led to genetically variable offspring. Well, what are the sources of genetic variation in sexually reproducing organisms? Well, we've got several um, things that crop up right in meiosis itself. And one of them is the independent assortment of chromosomes that happens at metaphase one. So let's write in that. So let's write metaphase one of meiosis one, right? Remember that homologous chromosomes are pairing up during meiosis one, right? And they just, they pair up with their homologous partner and eventually they separate from their homologous partner, right? But the way that um, pairs of homologous chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate is random. So the way that one pair of homologous chromosomes lines up at the metaphase plate is independent of the next pair. That's independent of the next pair. So if you've got a cell that has four chromosomes in it, like this cell, you could end up with four different combinations of chromosomes in your gametes. You can follow these colored chromosomes to help us out. You can see that you could end up with the two blue chromosomes, one big, one small, the two red ones, or you could have a, lo a long blue one and a short red one, or a long red one and a short blue one, four different possible arrangements, if you have two pair of homologous chromosomes. What if you have 23 pair of homologous chromosomes? Well, there's some math that can allow us to sort out the number of different combinations possible. And that is two raised to the power n, where n is the haploid number of chromosomes in a cell. So if we have 20, okay, so if we have um, four chromosomes total in our cell, like this diagram, our haploid number would be two. So two raised to the power two, two times two is four. Four different possibilities. 
<laughs> well, what if we have 46 total chromosomes and our haploid number is 23? Well, 2 raised to the power 23 is, is pretty darn big. It's actually greater than 8 million different combinations that when you're making eggs or sperm, your, your cells, because of independent assortment of chromosomes, are, are able to make 8 million different possible combinations of your chromosomes. Crazy, huh? Lots of variation there. On top of that, we can't forget about crossing over or genetic recombination. This is happening in meiosis 1. It starts in prophase 1 of meiosis 1. When uh, homologous chromosomes pair up in synapsis, they're held together, and then chiasma or crosses form between them, right? And they exchange or swap genetic material, the non-sister chromatids. And that leaves, uh, homolo I'm sorry, it leaves chromatids or chromosomes that have a combination of genetic material from, uh, from non-sister chromatids. And that produces recombinant chromosomes, we say. So this crossing over is in addition to the independent assortment that happens. And on top of all that, you've got to remember that during sexual reproduction, we've got, oh, and this gives us a little bit of the details of how that crossing over happens. It's kind of a cool little slide you can check out. But on top of the independent assortment of chromosomes and recombination, genetic recombination due to crossing over, we have the random fertilizations of gametes. So if you have a couple, uh, they make you know, all these different kinds of eggs or sperm, and then it's random. One egg meets up with one sperm. And so if we're just thinking about independent assortment alone, there are over, if you have a single couple, there are over 64 trillion possible different combinations in humans, in the human offspring that would be produced. And that doesn't even include crossing over. So it tells you that, you know, your siblings, while we carry a lot of the same genetic material, about 50% on average, uh, guess what? Still are likely to be quite different from each other because there are so many different possible combinations of chromosomes and crossing overs happening, leading to genetic variation, right? Chapter 13, review questions, um, check them out. There are some things in our text that are useful. And also I've posted a few review questions that you should be able to sort out before um, taking the online quiz. And that's it.